Today we're talking all about green screens. Why would you want to use one of these in your portrait work? Stay tuned. One of the most exciting things I did last year was started using a green screen. Now, I was a green screen naysayer. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it didn't have a place in portraiture. When I thought of green screen, I thought of the most cheesy TV moments. He's here to help me out here. <laughs> Woo! I can do the weather like this. <laughs> I started using green screens with my seniors last year, and it was a big hit. Today I'm going to show you how I take a green screen portrait and retouch it to a finished product. So why would you ever want to use a green screen for headshots? Well, it gives you a lot of flexibility in the background color. How many times have you had somebody show up for a photo shoot and you thought to yourself, well, there's an interesting shade of red. What type of background am I going to use to make this look good? By using a green screen, you have an unlimited resource of colors you can use as backgrounds. Now that you've got all these colors to use, you can make each headshot look completely different. This will give each customer a unique portrait. If you need your portraits to look consistent, this is a perfect way to get the same exact background for each picture. Now I photograph about 400 high school students every summer. It is impossible to light the background, have it the same exact color temperature in every shot spread over the course of four months. By using a green screen, I can guarantee that each background is gonna have a uniform look. Fixing stray hairs in a green screen portrait is simple. You just paint green over the stray hairs and they're gone. And finally, using a green screen helps your business stand out a little bit. It's something different, not everyone does it, and I think it really gives your business an edge. So let's make one of these green screen headshots. How are we gonna do this? Well, the first thing we'll need is a green screen. And you can either use a green screen like this from Amazon. And I did put a link to this green screen in the description below. This is the one I use. I like it because it folds up on a wire frame and folds into this little case and is really easy to move around. If I go somewhere that has a wall, I can lean it against the wall and I don't need a background stand. So again, I put a link for this in the description. However, you could use anything that's green. You could go to Joanne Fabrics and buy a cheap piece of green fabric and use that as your background. Now, why do we use green? Well, we use green because it is the furthest color from human skin, and that makes it easier to extract. So on the left is the portrait that we're gonna be retouching today, and on the right is a bird's eye view diagram of the lighting setup. Now the lighting setup was about as simple as you could get. On camera right, I had a large umbrella, and in the background, I have a background light to illuminate the green, and on camera left, I have a strip box that just added a little bit of highlights to her hair right here. There's no secret to really lighting the green. The goal is to keep the green as evenly lit as possible. You don't wanna see shadows and wrinkles in the green. You want the green to be solid green. Before we do any green screen extraction, I'm gonna clean up this image so that it's ready to go. I'm going to first hit C for the crop tool and I always crop my senior portraits as eight by tens. That way, if they order 4x6s or 5x7s, we're not chopping off the top and bottom of the image, we are chopping off the sides, which usually is a little easier to do. So I've now got my image cropped to be an 8x10. I'm going to use the burn tool now, and I'm going to burn the shadows at 100%, and I'm going to color in this drape, because we don't really need to see any of the detail, or wrinkles, or dust spots, or stray hairs that cover up the drape. So I'm gonna color the drape completely black. There we go. Now I'm gonna use a black brush. I'm gonna hit D for default, and that will change my foreground color to black. And with a soft black brush, I'm just gonna color in these areas where there's stray hairs covering the drape. Perfect. 
Now, let's fix some of these stray hairs. We're not gonna fix all of them, let's, but let's fix the major ones. I'm going to hit B for the brush tool, hold down Option, and I'm gonna sample the green color in the background. Now, wherever I paint, it is going to erase the hair and make it green. That way, in just a minute, the computer will extract, but not keep these stray hairs. Now you can notice that the shade of green is changing a little bit and that's fine. And there we go. Now the next step I'm going to liquefy so I can straighten her necklace a little bit and fix the corners of the drape. Now I'm just going to push down this corner and then on the other side push that down as well and I'm going to pull that side out just a little bit and this gives two nice leading lines that go up to her face which is obviously the main part of our portrait. Now I'll hit OK. Now for the fun stuff let's do the extraction. This is incredibly easy. There are software packages that you can buy that help you extract green screen images, but definitely not required. Today we're just going to hit select, then come down to color range, and I'm going to click on the eyedrop tool, and I'm going to click on the green. Now the goal here is to get her completely selected in white and the background selected in black. If we move the fuzziness slider, we can control how much tolerance there is for the green. So right about there looks good. If you see that the subject is black and the background is white, you'll need to hit invert to switch it the other way around. Now I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit and there we go. I'm going to hit okay. Now this gives us the marching ants around our subject. If you have marching ants around the background, you forgot to invert it, but not to fear. If you hold Shift, Command, I, it then inverts the selection. So now my background is selected. If we press Shift, Command, I again, it will now select our subject. Now we're going to press the layer mask icon, and this is our extracted image. Now's the good time to select a background because when we put a background in there, it's gonna be easy to see if there are green spots that we missed. Now, obviously her hair has some green spots. It's super easy to fix, but let's pick a background first. Now I'm on a Mac, so I put a folder in my dock that has my most frequently used backgrounds. So I can just come down, click one and drag it into the document. Now I will put it in the background and I'm gonna resize it by holding down the Option key and dragging, and it will pull out from the center till it's the size of my image. Now it looks a little bit goofy right now, but we're gonna fix that up. Now you're probably wondering, where can I get these backgrounds to use for my headshots? Well, I have a collection of 12 that you can purchase on my website. It's only 10 bucks, and it will give you these 12 backgrounds plus a bonus background for free. The link to these backgrounds is in the description underneath this video. Before we continue, there are a few things we can do to the background to make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's add a little bit of blur. So I'm gonna go down to blur and Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set that at about 29, hit okay. Now let's add a background light. So I will make a new layer and with a very large soft white brush, I'm going to just click once behind her head. Now you can see how that light sort of adds an element of depth that helps the subject feel like it's part of the picture. Now let's fix up this green and it's super easy to do. We're gonna make a new layer above our subject and I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and I'm gonna turn this layer into what's called a clipping mask layer. Now, anything we paint on this layer will only show up where pixels are showing on the layer below. So we just wanna color the outside of her hair. Here's how we're gonna do it. Select under the blending modes, color, 
And now with a brush, I'm going to hold down Option or Alt, and I'm going to sample a color of her hair. Now wherever we paint, it's going to recolor the hair from green to her natural color. Now I'm going to keep sampling her hair color as we get further and further away from the spot we started so that the color of her hair stays consistent. So I'll sample right here and then paint. Our portrait's starting to look pretty good. Now let's do a few fine tuning things before we flatten our layers. I'm gonna go through and just paint out any stray hairs that look bothersome or that catch my attention. And I'm gonna do that just by painting black on the layer mask of our subject. We don't wanna take them all out completely or it won't look real. And there we go. So now our image is ready to be flattened. And we can now proceed with retouching the portrait. I'm gonna retouch this portrait using a plugin by Skylum called Luminar 4. Now I would love to be able to have the time to do frequency separation and other techniques on each picture. However, I'm a volume photographer. I might have 30 of these to do in a day, and I would not have time to go through and manually retouch each image like that. So what I'm gonna do here is click the portrait button in Luminar, and we'll go to the skin enhancer, and I like to turn this up to about 80. There we go. Then come down under portrait enhancer and go through each of these sliders. We can turn up the face light to make the face a little bit brighter. The eye whitening can remove some of the redness in the eyes. Eye enhancer will make our pupils and our iris a little bit more punchy, have a little more contrast. If the subject has dark circles, we can remove those. We can make the eyes a little bit bigger, and the keyword there is a little bit. We can sharpen the eyebrows with this slider. Now we can come down and adjust the lips. I like to add a little bit of saturation to the lips, a little bit of red, darken them a little bit, and we can also whiten our teeth. So there is our finished Luminar retouched version. If I click on the eyeball, you can see before, and here's after, before and after. If you don't have Luminar, there is a link in the description. Go check it out. It is a phenomenal plugin. And we are now at our last step. The last thing we're gonna do is add a vignette to this portrait. And again, that helps tie our subject into the background even more. So what I did was hit Shift Command A, and that's gonna bring up our camera raw dialog. And I'm going to slide the vignette slider to the left. Hit OK, and we are finished. So let's take a look at before and after. Here is our before headshot, and here is our after. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do. You have unlimited graphic resources on the web that you can use in your portrait work. In a future video, we'll take a look at that. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out the links for backgrounds and Luminar in the description below. If you learned anything today, do me a huge favor, give me a thumbs up. And if you really learned something cool, please subscribe. Have a great day.